Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with the Sarlows. I'm Kelly. Good morning. I'm Karen. We have pre-recorded a few of our Coffee with the Sarlows episodes, and we had done so because we were waiting to hear um, official word about whether or not we were going to cancel our Evening with Medium events. So we are recording our intro now so that we can include up-to-date information for all of our listeners and ticket holders. We have gone ahead and canceled our July and August Evening with Medium events. Mm -hmm. Um, That is official. Tickets have already been refunded. So if you were one of the ticket holders and you have not seen your money back in your account, Account, please email us at info at buysarlo.com or call us directly at 705-476-2613. We will deal with that for you. Our December event, as far as we know, is still booked and we are hoping that that will fly. You can book tickets on the website, buysarlo.com, and we will keep you posted as to whether or not that changes. Sips of Sanity is a second podcast series that Kelly and I have. It is About 10 to 12, 15 minute shows, there is a series of five. They run the first week of every single month and we pick a topic on emotional or spiritual intelligence and we give you tools. You get the first one for free all the time at the website by sarlo.com in each series. The remaining four are always found at patreon.com backslash by Sarlo. Kelly's going to explain more to you about Patreon. So Patreon is a paid membership with exclusive content. Um, There are eight tiers, just meaning that in each tier there are different benefits depending on how much you're willing to um, subscribe to every month. And that is something that you can move very fluidly in and out of it as it suits you. Um, And the intention is to kind of give you supplemental activities um, Mm -hmm. and different things to do and think about that go along with our stories uh, in Coffee with the Sarlows as well as, as Sips of Sanity. So it's meant to support you in all areas of your life. We realize we're still in COVID days and clients are still wondering if we're doing personal sessions and yes, we are. So we do sessions by telephone, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, and WhatsApp for clients all over the world, all of the time, not just during COVID. You can reach us by submitting on the website a form for a session and one of us is going to get back to you. Good. Okay. So on to today's show. So what are we talking about today? Some clients. Surprise. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just some sessions actually. And with a theme, again, I'm I'm picking themes. Um, The first client, what do you want to name her? Her? Um, Donna. Okay. Um, Donna uh, does her session by telephone and uh, Donna's in British Columbia. So she phones in and starts her session after consent by just simply saying, you can go open about relationships. So she gives me some idea, not all together. And so I just said to the spirit guides, what relationship? <laughs> like, is this the one with her father, her mother, a child? partner, friendships, co-workers, I don't know. (laughs) And the spirit guide said, you could ask her because she's curious about several of them. So you're going to be right about many. And I said, okay, this, this is confusing. So you're not giving me an answer? And they're like, well, we are. She's got several on her list and we can pick one. And I said, well, why don't you just pick one? And they said, because we're going to pick one and we're going to give you all the information and she'll instantly want another one instead of the one that you've given her. That's what she does. That's what a lot of clients do. (laughs) Well, and this is the pattern. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, that sucks. And they said, well, yes, it sucks because it's a pattern in life. So if, if they have an anniversary, so I'm like, oh, so you, she's, you're picking her partner. And they went, we are. So if they have an anniversary and he says, what would you like for our anniversary? What would you like to do this year? She'll go, oh, I don't know. Surprise me. And he's just like steam coming out of his head. <laughs> he wants to just spin, turn into the devil and uh, kick her because he knows what it means. He knows now that because they've been married long enough that what she's doing is setting him up to, for sabotage. 
So he could go out and go, okay, in past years, she's really referenced that she enjoyed the flowers. I'll do flowers. Uh, and I have a budget. I've got $100 or $200 or whatever for this anniversary, 20 bucks, whatever it is. Um, so should I spend the whole amount on the flowers or should I get one flower? Should I get a bouquet? And then he, and then it's like, okay, I don't, well, maybe, maybe that's good. Oh, but then, you know, in another year she got mad at me because it was flowers and it wasn't something personal for her. She said personal, but she won't tell me what the fuck that means. So should I get her a manicure or a pedicure or does she now consider that primary care? Because, you know, her vocabulary has changed, and I don't know if this is now called primary care or if this is actually luxury. Because we go so often that I'm not certain what luxuries are anymore. So there's just complete confusion. Because where it used to be a treat, she's now going for that pedicure manicure on a regular basis. So do you just get her the gift certificate, or do you, what is it? Do you up the package? Like, and he's like, so I don't know what to do with that either. So then I could see, and I'm being particular about the examples, but you could see where their lack of communication, specifically in this case hers, has purposely set him up to go into a mood. And as soon as he, he starts off where he wants to do something for her, so his mood starts off really good and, and caring and loving, but his mood takes a dive less than five minutes. Well, it sounds like the second she withholds. Yeah, he goes into a spin and his moods change. And then as soon as his mood changes, she attacks him. She goes in for the kill. What are you so angry about? If you love me, you do this with the right intention in your heart. And she can't see that it's her behavior and her lack of communication that is causing the problem. She fully believes it's his shit. And then she says things to him like, you need therapy. Mm. We will actually say in, in our mm -hmm. relationship, Eric and I, if, if someone is saying like, where do you want to go to eat tonight? If one of us says, oh, it doesn't matter. The other person will go, is this a trap or does it actually not matter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then one of, if, if I have to sit there and go, oh, it is a trap. I need pasta. Take me anywhere there's pasta. <laughs> then we, we can sort of make light of the situation and then move forward with either some humility um, and an honest answer, or no, nope, awesome. we're good. It really doesn't matter. Go right ahead and pick. And, and so there's a gentleness and a freedom. Absolutely. And because this is not part of their skill set, mm -hmm. she firmly believes that he's not in the relationship. Even though he's doing the crazy, I have to problem solve everything, I have to do all the work. Mm -hmm. So the guides showed me this and said, "You, we really want you to deal with this because she's going to ask about the relationship. That is the reason that she's booked this appointment, but she's not going to tell you that. She's going to say, just go open. She's not going to tell you anything. And then if you say, oh, I have medium, I have your grandparents here. You've got two grandmothers and a grandfather and a step-grandfather that she'll go, oh, okay. But then halfway through, if you do a check-in and say to her, um, how's the session going? She'll go, well, it's okay. And, and, and she won't be specific. Even if you say, um, well, what is it that you need? She'll just go, oh, just go open. So she purposely withholds intentionally. And the session was highlighting that because she was being asked over and over again, what are your needs? What do you want? Can you be specific? I'm asking you for clarity. I'm asking you for direction. And she's flat out refusing you. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and uh, proceed. Tell her that her grandparents are here. <laughs> oh, so they're telling you the trap. <laughs> yes. Totally. That it is a trap. Yep. And then how you're going to walk yourself out of it? Yep. Okay. So they said, we would really like for you to channel the grandparents first. And she wants the step-grandfather um, but that's not the priority, but out of the grandparents, that's who she would want to see if you could get, because he was the one that was, he kowtowed to this crap. He'd buy her the flowers and the pet, manicure, pedicure, and because he just thought 
in his relationships, just get them everything. And that way, if you just get them everything, they can't, they can't come at you. But he would do it to the point that he had no money to do it, and he built credit. Oh, no. Uh, oh, pardon me, debt. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, you don't build credit. <laughs> Sorry. He built debt before he passed. And so his partner was stuck with a huge debt mm-hmm. on their credit card when he passed away. And so apparently she called a psychic to ask what, what up with that. And he had to come through to this, his partner at the time and say, well. Oh, that's hilarious. I just, so she got stuck with the debt that her own patterns. Oh, my God. that's Isn't it awesome? Yeah, and that, see, that's what I think a lot of people think karma is. Wait now. So without going into that side story of karma, can we just get, can we stay with this? Because I know that's humorous if you actually get karma. But she, the guides wanted this story brought up from him to make a point to her about her behavior modeling her own mother's mm. in all of her relationships with all of her husbands. Yes. That makes sense. Yes, because, and this was the point, she goes through several husbands for the same issue that she has, believing that all of the men are not good men, not understanding that she has a pattern and a behavior and they respond to it. And then her reaction to that is what drives her to her, I can't stand them, I hate them. They're not meeting my needs. They don't love me if they, and into her patterning of whining and complaining and victimizing. And this was going to present itself again to Donna. Donna was well on her way in relationship number one. And she's currently looking for relationship number two. While in relationship number gross. Yes. Which is part of that, right? Yeah. You're going to want to look for another partner or keep your eyes open or flirt or... You respond to someone's flirting towards you and encourage that a little bit because you can't feel too secure when you're treating your partner that way. You don't. So part of, I guess, the common sense in that kind of unhealthy mind is I'm setting my partner up not to meet my needs. Oh, well then, I guess we know where this is going to go. And so I better prepare and take care of myself. So The guides explain all of this so quickly. I do not know how to explain to people, unless you've been a client and you know how fast Kelly and I move through these sessions. All of that is explained? Three, five minutes. At the most. Mm -hmm. And that's including explaining it to her. I was going to say, that's if the client doesn't talk. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So the guides asked me to explain and to go through this, first of all, to set it up and talk about the stepfather. And the behavior. And she was really good in the sense that she could totally see it. Mm. She totally understood it. And she thought that this um, step-grandfather was finally the good partner. (laughs) She was looking for the guy that was going to do it all like him. So she was willing to go through some of these relationships like her mom did, like these divorces, to get to the guy that was just going to give her everything. So sorry, when you say she saw it. Yeah, she can see it in her mom. She can see the pattern in what her mom does. But then she still thought he was the goal or the standard? Yeah. So she doesn't see anything? Well, kind of. She sees it to use to her advantage. I'm not seeing. She, I'm not saying. I'm gonna stand in my position. So I'm, she saw nothing. I'm going to say that I want the listeners to understand that she saw what she wanted, and that she saw it and she could understand it to a, a level. That's it. Not deeply where the guides wanted her to, or what you're referring to. Mm-hmm. But if I describe some of that behavior, she could go, "Yeah, yeah." He 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 met my yeah. He was great to my mom. He really loved her. He did everything for. Her. He'd give her the shirt off his back for her, like that. He she saw that is what I'm saying. So she sees a piece. So sorry. Did she actually see her mom withholding and her mom? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She saw her mom withholding to get what she wanted. Okay. I'm going to attempt to let this keep going. I know that's hard. When, when you know the healthy behaviors and when you know the healthy belief systems. And I knew this was going to be a rough show to tell you today and that you might want to call it quits and go sit in the sun. Yep. Because I knew it was going to hit your buttons of where you get annoyed by that kind of behavior. But I also know that in a session that you're very skilled at being able to point it out as the guides ask you to, to be able to prove the the lessons. And that sometimes the guides have their way of constructing a session Mm -hmm. to get to the client to the place they want them. Mm-hmm. I, you, not not me. This is this is the reason I love doing this show with you. And, you know, I, I've always said if you didn't want to do this, there wouldn't be a show. Is that we can say sometimes almost the same point in two very different ways. And I think it's really good because clients or listeners for the first time can sit there and go, you know, if you're pointing on YouTube on your your big screen TV right now, you might point to your right to Karen and go, oh, yeah, mm-hmm, I get that. Don't know what Kelly's doing over there. And then later on be like, oh. And I think that's good. And I also think it's important, too, that when you and I tell stories that the other person has very good human reactions, mm-hmm. good just being typical human reactions, so that listeners can feel not alone in the way that they respond to the information and think, oh, yeah, I'm disgusted with the behavior, too. Mm. To, to see us as human, because I think there are there are some clients who know us very well and know that that's mm-hmm. the case and that we can separate. Mm-hmm. And there are the first-timers who think pedestal-like they must, you know, they must be a certain kind of person above mm. above feelings sometimes, mm. which is not true. And then to be able to illustrate that it is appropriate to be grossed out as a human by certain behaviors, but still be professional enough to say, no worries. A lot of us go through this. Mm-hmm. Some of us have been through this in the past. We're going to walk you through these steps. And that's what mm-hmm. we can do in coaching, but also in channeling. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. And that the spirit guides show it to me in that order. And go, go. And my job is not to change the order. Uh-huh. My job is not to say, you know, I think the guy's got that wrong and I'm going to start at the end and go backwards. I will make a mess. But if I follow it in the exact order and do exactly what they say, right to the point of where I channel him and then I say, and they tell me, now ask her the question, did you want anything in particular today? And she comes out with, well, I really thought you were going to talk about my relationship. I really thought that you, if you knew what you were doing and, and then, or the guides might say to me, challenge her, say, did you actually want uh, information about the relationship and that you're happy with this part, but the guides are saying you actually wanted this thing and that you're withholding. And is that correct? You're withholding. And at that point, when I confronted her with totally calm, no shaming. My intention mm-hmm. is never to shame because that, that's, that's not part of healing. You don't heal, help someone heal if you're shaming them. But to say, is this what you've been doing? Quite not, like 99% of the time, the client will laugh uncomfortably and go, <laughs> yeah, just thought if you were any good, you'd know. Or something to that effect mm-hmm. is... is often what they say, not necessarily in that tone of voice or those words, but meaning that, then I get to say to them, the guide set your session up this way to confront you about a, about a particular behavior where you withhold on purpose, which you did in this session, and then say that your needs weren't met and that I should have known better. But you do the same thing to the men in your life where they're supposed to know better They're supposed to know what you need without you ever having to communicate. Doesn't that make it convenient for you that you don't have to do any work in the relationship, but that when it doesn't work, it wouldn't be your fault, even though you're not actually doing any of the work and you're making them not just do healthy work in a relationship, but you, you can fuck them so much that they have to figure out what the work actually is. There's so much confusion. So l- l- let me get through the weeds of confusion first, and we'll see if I have any energy 
to actually then meet the need that you're talking about. Don't even know if I can come out of all the weeds first. Right? (laughs) And I think that's where some people in the audience today or at home listening might go, I'm in the weeds. (laughs) I'm in them. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, And I'm still in them. I haven't come out. (laughs) And this is where this relationship is stuck. He's in the weeds and can't get out. Mm -hmm. And he no longer has the energy, which really means that there is no relationship. And so she's... She's wanting to know, is there a relationship? Should I stick around for this person? As I look for another one. (laughs) Yes. Yes, as I'm very open to someone else coming along. And and that at the beginning of the relationship, she won't withhold from that person. She will say things. So I said to her, you gaslight at the beginning of relationships. You present what you know people want and what's healthy. And then once you've got what you want, it's like you take all your... I never, uh, yeah, this False is, advertising. Yes. Oh, I like that. She takes all the healthiness and throws it out the window for the dysfunction and goes, there. Good luck. So she knows. And I said, Donna, the interesting thing is, is that you actually know some of the healthy behaviors. And she goes, I do. And here's where we had a very interesting session that really shifted. Because it was like Donna finally was like, well, holy crap, Karen, I've been in therapy. I I wasn't quite expecting that you were going to know this much and like get right in there and get right to the bottom of it all. Like, I can't even hide anything. And I said, well, you can't hide anything in therapy. And she goes, yeah, I did. And I said, well, then why did you, why did you go? The point of therapy is to be honest enough to get the help. Yeah, and, and she no, goes, "No, it's not. No, and now I'm understanding. <laughs> I'm totally. You know, every therapist in the audience is like, oh, Karen, girl, <laughs> <laughs> you newbie, <laughs> you silly woman, you. <laughs> Don't you have friends that are psychiatrists? Didn't they tell you this shit?' But she was in a place that day after listening to her spirit guides talk about her mom and these behaviors. And how it's crashed all of her relationships. She's not in any healthy relationship or even happy. Although on the surface, she gets a quick happy because she gets the manicure and she gets to go and do it. She gets the flowers and she feels instantly good, but then not. No no connection. There's no connection and Mm -hmm. there's no real lasting, there's no real lasting anything because the whole point of somebody buying you those things is to feel connected to them, that they love you. And she's not connecting to that. She's just saying, I'm going to get my hands and nails done because don't I look good? It's to look as good as other women. It has nothing to do with really that she enjoys doing it or that it really is about self-care. And and I'm wanting to be very careful about that topic about the mani-pedi because that is not true of all women. No. It is not true of all men that go and get many petties. Mm-hmm. And that is not to bash anybody in that industry whatsoever. They provide amazing services. I'm talking about the dysfunction of a particular person that uses that in that relationship mm-hmm. to say, I want it, and then dismiss. So I said, you have a pattern of wanting things, getting what you want, and dismissing, and then wanting the very next thing in a cycle of always testing the partner instead of connecting to the partner. You don't, you don't connect, you test. And I said, so he's in the bush, he's in the weeds. <laughs> he knows it's all about being tested. And now he's figured out, I'm not enjoying life where everything I do for someone to say, I care about you, is dismissed that quickly. So he's figuring it out. For him. And she's catching on that he's figuring it out. She's catching on a little bit, not a lot, because she really honestly believes this is going to work. And if it doesn't, then I have to find another person, another man that will that will provide all of these things and, and who doesn't want connection. So the guides took her down this little road of challenging her and I think it's um, I think it was a, just a good a good hour in providing her with some help to say, here's the cycle. 
But there is an option, and it's called connection. So instead of these things, what about a walk together? What about sitting on the swing together and having a tea? Or, and, and having a good discussion? Why don't you, she goes, a good discussion about what? And I said, well, you could pick a podcast. You could listen to it and share it with him. You could then discuss it with him, see what he thinks about it. You could find out what he's interested in and just ask him questions about it. And I said, you know, like, for example, he likes biking. And she goes, yeah, he does. And uh, mountain biking. And on like on trails and stuff. And I said, uh, well, anyway. Not, not concrete through the mountains? <laughs> well, I, city biking. There was a twinge in your face at the end of that giggle that was just like, fuck you. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? I Like, I have a bike. I'm going to make sure that your screen is the one that's showing when you're laughing. Well, I have a bike, but I mean, I just ride city streets. Yeah, but you said mountain biking and then proceeded to tell me, oh. you know, through trails. Right. Got it. I don't even know what I was thinking now. Um, oh, yeah. So I said, well, he likes mountain biking and you don't. You don't bike at all. I said, so you could listen to a podcast 10, 15 minutes on bikes or on some trails or on, um, I don't know, just any mountain biking podcast where you just hear the discussion. Maybe you'll learn a little bit of the lingo. Maybe he comes in the door and you can say, how was the suspension? How was the, geez, I know nothing about biking, so this is going to be a challenge. But No, but can I offer something even better to, to anyone who's mm-hmm. listening and thinking of their partner's hobbies and interests? Mm-hmm. I would actually recommend YouTube yeah. because if you're genuinely not interested in it, you're probably not curious about the facts. And if you go on YouTube, mm. there's some beautiful scenery. Right. And I can specifically relate to your example. I have no interest in, in joining Eric on the yeah. trails, but I would definitely sit down to watch a BC um, trail ride right. because of the beauty. the beauty. And, and so, you know, you've got a little bit of quality time. Yeah. He's in his own world figuring out, you know, what he loves, but at the same time, I get to see this beautiful BC landscape. And maybe what she can talk about is what did you see on your bike ride? What, what did yeah. you enjoy? What is nature like at this uh, right, right now? Yes. Oh, the pussy willows are out and the, you know, the, the crocuses and- are coming up and I haven't seen any bears and, Mm-hmm. But I said you could find something that does interest you so that you have something to discuss with him. That's connection. And she goes, I could do that. She goes, I could do that. And I said, okay. So then her focus was on, could you help me with more stuff like that, please? She goes, um, Karen, I'm, I'm seeing that I mean. Mm, good for her. And I went, yeah, you are. I said, you are the mean girl. In the relationship, you are the woman the sisters are will fucking hate because you're hurting their brother. If his mother and father love him, they will not like you because they will see how he's changing and how he's frustrated and not being loved or even that the ways that he's trying to show that he does care about somebody um, are being dismissed. You're, you're dismissing his, his life experience. And I said, um, that would be painful for his family. That would be a lot of pain. Anyone who loves him. His friends probably can't stand you. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I don't even hang around them. And I went, I'll bet you do avoid them because they would put it in your face that you are unkind to their friend. And if they are very good friends, they would coach him to get the hell out of the relationship with you if they're good friends. And he doesn't shoot the messenger. Mm Mm-hmm. But if he shoots the messenger, well, then they won't because then he's going to get isolated into a relationship just with you. So we had this very honest conversation from her spirit guides, Kelly, saying that her mother sabotaged her relationships and that the pattern that she was carrying forth from her mother was sabotaging her relationships. And I said, can you now see that thanks to your step? Grand, your step grandfather. And she went, Yeah, I can. And I said, Now, I'm not a therapist. And I said, So I can do certain work with you and talk to you. But I said, I really do believe that you need to have this addressed and you need to be held accountable to somebody on a regular basis because this is everything you've seen in your life. These are all the years of your mom's marriages. 
And I said, so you've never had a role model as a mom who has given you anything other than this. So this will be your go-to is to treat people like this. And I said, so being held accountable to stopping that behavior is going to be key. Mm -hmm. Because sabotage is your biggest issue. It's one of the hardest ones to overcome if you don't have any system of accountability. Because if you think you're just going to be fine being accountable to yourself when you never have been, then what makes you think you can start just because you want to? Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a good point. I like that. And that's exactly why the guide suggested therapy, because you can't expect friends to hold you accountable. Because most most people in that type of mind frame, at, at that level of emotional intelligence, shoot the messenger. They don't have enough emotional intelligence to know not to, or to understand the benefits of not doing that to a friend. They just don't have the EQ. Mm -hmm. And so, and you can't expect your parents to, or siblings, or anybody really in your life. And when your pattern is for for self-sabotage, then really the only person that you might have in your world or could bring into it is a therapist. Because... That's what they're going to, that's the service they provide is that perspective and to give you homework. And when you come back to say, what's your homework and let's see how you got it done. If you let them and if you have a good therapist. Yes, that's, that's fair. Those are both very fair statements. Yeah. Hmm. I want to circle back to a comment that was said to her and it had to do with not shaming her. And yet sometimes during the session, the guides would say something like, "Um, you're a mean girl. And I would check in with her and say, do you understand that that's not where they're trying to make a shaming statement to say you're a mean girl? They're trying to be factual about the behavior of a mean girl because you're not just mean to a partner, you're mean to yourself. You're not allowing yourself to learn healthier behaviors and stop the sabotage, your the meanness is directed towards your own self. You deny yourself your own happiness. So we talked about being an aspect of her being mean towards him and towards her own self. And that if she felt shame in that, she probably was going to just sabotage again and not bother to really address either issue. But that if she stayed out of feeling shame and she remained in curiosity and she looked for tools and she wanted to practice and be able to make mistakes and go at it again, that she could become healthier and healthier. But it would be her own shame that contributes and causes this pattern of sabotage. And that's something to deal with again in therapy. So it was a really, it was a really good work session in in that she listened that's why i said at the beginning like she heard that she did hear things and that she would hear it on a level but not really know that there were so many deeper levels to it because she's never had the emotional intelligence or conversation to go there and in the past if somebody did if a friend did challenge her she just sort of had another drink it was like oh it's friday night lighten up like dismissive. And and I think the session offered her a chance to have an hour. And I think she purposely picked telephone out of fear that if we could see each other, that she would feel shamed. But I think the point that she chose telephone not to be seen afforded her an opportunity to hear a little better. Hmm. It it makes me sad, and and I 100% Mm -hmm. understand why and what you're saying. It makes me sad because I think people miss Mm -hmm. out on seeing the face of someone who channels the entities that love you. Yeah. And if you don't have that in your life or you have created such untrustworthy relationships, then you haven't actually allowed yourself the ability to witness it. And I think that is something that people do have the opportunity to see and feel when they choose FaceTime, um, Zoom, and Skype. It can be an awesome opportunity if they pick 
to see us, um, I feel anyway, knowing who we are, that they can see that there's love in the channeling and that there is a desire for healing. There's a desire to give information or, or referrals and truth and all kinds of tools um, because of our intention of that these are healing sessions. And I, th I think a lot of people don't understand that when we go through the consent process and say energy healing, I think that they don't even hear it. Mm -hmm. I think most people skip right through to, I'm just waiting to hear if they say psychic future or medium, um, or if I'm calling for medical intuitive. They just, I just hear you, I just, that's, that's the interest. And I think they gloss over that our focus is on helping people heal. So they think they're calling a psychic and that's it. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that because of the other stuff that we do that are in, that changes our intention. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one. I think there's also the component that people just don't know how to receive. And, and if they haven't ever mm -hmm. been able to wrap their heads around the possibility of what energy healing could actually be, mm -hmm. they may hear it and not really know what to do with it know how to sit there and, and, like I said, receive it. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, too, that we can talk about Donna in that she doesn't know how to receive, and yet she just wants him to give her things, but to prove that she's lovable, but then as soon as she gets it, she dismisses everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was the key thing about this message, or one of them, because I know that there are people like this. Mm -hmm that are so empty inside themselves and then they create this empty relationship and empty patterns and behaviors in the relationship. And in Donna's case, she's looking for fixing him. She's look, looking to blame him. She's looking to... <laughs> I can't put those two things in the same sentence. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can because absolutely you can because th there are people that truly believe that they're fixing things for that person. Uh, Kelly, it's messed, but I 100%. Okay, but I am I know that you're saying that's what people believe. I'm saying that if you're listening and you're like, yeah, you have to know that those two things don't go in the same sentence. They're not the same experience. I'm saying that's how confusing it all is. I know. Yeah. I I, I personally loved her session. Partly because she she started off as this one mm -hmm. tightly wound, this is who I am, I'm coming in to test, I'm coming in to um, continue my patterns, this is what I do with everybody, you're no different, Karen Sarlo, here you go, here's your shit show. And the guides came walking right in and went, and not with us. And the guides walked right in and said, and this is how you're going to deal with it, there's love, there's compassion here. This is her soul, and Karen, this is how you're going to present it. And I love the fact that the spirit guides and her soul love her that much. I Yeah, I was actually going to point out that I love how much the guides love you and that you we've got like mm -hmm. the ultimate bosses who, who mm -hmm. aren't saying customer's always right. They're saying, no, we're going to protect you in your job mm -hmm. so that you can do your best possible job and feel safe. Yes. And supported. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I I felt that in that session as well, that when I got off the phone and, and you know, came back down into the office and you said, how, how was your session? And I said to you, it was very good. It was very good, but it, and, and you and I get this, it's very good, but it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different ways that you and I describe to each other how a session can be difficult. And I know you can say as, you know, your head is bent down over your own work, Difficult as in difficult client, difficult messages, difficult physical body for you, difficult for synesthesia. It, like there's different levels. Language barriers, everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, yes. Oh God, that's a whole other mm -hmm. issue. I have that coming up again where I have two people for a session because I have to have a translator mm -hmm. for, another la for another language. So yes, there's all kinds of different issues that can make it challenging, but I loved how Donna sat in all of the discomfort 
and felt safe enough with me, safe enough with her spirit guides in how it was presented to her so that she could hear some hard things about herself and that she hung in there enough to say, is there a way to come out of some of this? What are some of these tools? Now, it's not my responsibility to see if she's going to follow that. When she gets off the phone, that's her day and that's her life. But I'm really grateful that I get to be a piece of that. And if that grows something for her or it hits her in 20 years and she remembers something, I'm really happy that there's a little piece in there for us. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Thanks for sharing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I think there was a lots in that one. Mm-hmm. I'm sure when I go to listen to it myself on Saturday when, when it airs that... Um, there will be lots to extrapolate out of that. Cool. Yeah. You good for today? I am. Okay. Let's head out into the sun. Okay. So if you have questions or comments about today's show, you can email us at info at Otherwise, we've got a brand new show for you out next Saturday morning. Take care.